wildlife species in British Columbia are protected under two principal pieces of legislation, the Federal Species at Risk Act, also known as SARA, and the BC Wildlife Act. Conservation risk status is assessed by the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada, COSIWIC. In 1952, the Wallich Hydro Power Project was constructed. An earthen dam was built that raised the original lake level 22 meters. 211 hectares of land were inundated, including riparian habitat, natural shoreline and stream habitat. In British Columbia, about 26% of our species are listed as at risk, um, which is an alarming number if you think about it. And generally species are listed as at risk if they have declining trends, typically as a consequence of anthropogenic or human development of their habitats. Also if they have restricted geographic distributions or very low numbers in BC. Species at risk are actually particularly challenging for biologists for study. They're often at very low densities. I mean, they are species at risk, so they're not common on the landscape. They often are very cryptic in their ecology. They're nocturnal. They live under things, so they're tricky to see. So they have aspects to their ecology that make them really difficult to study. One of my favorite techniques that I've been employing lately is called environmental DNA or eDNA and that simply works on the premise that as a species goes about life processes in the water, mating, breeding, dying, it'll shed tissues and cells, its DNA, into the water. So with eDNA we can collect that, we can take it to the lab and we can tell you if that species is there. And so we sample water and, and we have specific questions in mind about does red leg frog occur here, does tailed frog or giant salamander occur here. And so with eDNA it allows us to do that in a way that's very cost efficient and it's generally somewhere between 90 and 98 percent detectability. If a species is present, eDNA will find it long before a human will. Studying bats is actually, it's a really exciting and really challenging process. Different bat species forage through their habitat in different ways. And so understanding how they move through the habitat and what different habitats they might use helps you when you're netting them to catch the species that you're after. Nets are a benign way. It's a quick capture process. It's essentially like hitting a pillow. It doesn't hurt the bat in any way. Another neat way to study bats is actually to use their acoustics. Different bats vocalize at different frequencies as they move through their environment, as they navigate essentially. So we have specialized equipment that allows us to record bat calls and tell what species has just passed us. In general, survey for species at risk, aquatic or non-aquatic, is challenging and it requires skills and expertise and specialized equipment and so it, it does cost money to do it. We secure funding from a number of different sources. There's focused conservation sources like Habitat Conservation Trust Fund and Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program. There's industry funding from industry leaders that um, understand that they have an effect and they want to inform more efficient management. And then there's academic partnerships like NSERC. Habitat is usually the driving factor behind any declining trend in any animal around the world. Um, and so understanding the habitat that the species needs for its conservation to help it survive, persist and breed out there, understanding where those habitats are is key to conserving that species. So having this information, having funding to collect this information, that's very important for us. That enables us to inform management decisions and to basically make conservation more efficient.